Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to my second channel video. Today I wanted to talk about some of the most successful countries in the world, because if you've seen pretty much anywhere ranking countries, you'll see that the Nordic or Scandinavian countries come up very highly in those lists. In fact, if you take a very broad index, like the happiness one, you'll see that Finland, Denmark, Norway, Iceland, and Sweden all make the top 10 list of uh, roughly 200 countries, which is pretty damn good. That's top 5% for all of them. How does this happen? How is it that they're the happiest countries in the world, and how is it that you can take pretty much any point and prove it with these. You can make the very, uh, you know, boring point that like, hey, corruption's bad. The less corrupt your country is perceived to be, the more successful it'll be. And, you know, that's that's a great point we can make. Sure, did you know corruption's bad for a country? You can make a political point that, hey, they have some of the strongest social safety nets, high quality education safety, uh, facilities, um, in inclusive institutions, and good job opportunities. Wow, social safety nets are good and we should have more of them to be like Scandinavia. We could go the opposite way and say, hey, ease of doing business, um, it's widely known that they've got some of the easiest countries to start a business in, etc, etc, etc. They have a lot of personal taxation, but not as much business taxation. Therefore, that's the thing you've got to do. You've got to have businesses be easy to start up. Again, entirely the opposite point. Or we could go an entirely different axis and be like, hey, they've got some of the least fractionalized countries, uh, ethnically speaking, in Europe, and therefore ethnic homogeneity is good. Or we could go the opposite way again and be like, hey, locking people up is bad. Uh, as you can see, some of the lowest incarceration rates in the world, and that's why they're so successful. Low incarceration, low crime, win, 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 win. There's so many different crazy points we can raise. We can even say, hey, did you know, being vaguely aligned to the US, uh, or somewhat neutral, like Finland or Sweden were in the uh, Cold War, that could, you know, we, we can prove pretty much any point we want to using these countries because they're successful, but instead of trying to group and work it out what it is that links them together, because there is a distinct Nordic identity, let's talk about what that Nordic identity includes, because it's very easy to say, hey, what is uh, Scandinavia? What is Nordic? Uh, so Scandinavia is Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. Then all of those countries, those three, plus Finland and Iceland, make up the Nordic five countries. But then it gets a bit more complex because the Nordic countries do still have a lot of territories. Um, again, although when we're talking about global empires, we're usually talking about, hey, you know how France is still holding on to that bit of Polynesia on the other side of the world, or like, you know, you know, French Guiana, it's not its own country. That's a part of France, the, the presidents, Macron and the Euro. Um, the territories of the Nordic countries aren't thought about as much, but they do get into a lot of confusion because like, hey, looking back here, it's like, did you know the Oland Islands? They're a part of the Nordic countries, but in a different way to Finland, which is their major country. Greenland is just a part of Denmark. Actually, every time I bring up this fact, there's someone who's like, really, Greenland? It just, for whatever reason, Google Maps goes for the weird distinction of not calling Greenland like a part of Denmark. If you highlight Denmark on a map, because you want to know where Denmark is. It doesn't show Greenland, despite that being its territory. Um, but Greenland is a part of the sovereign state of Denmark. And so, okay, you know, like, okay, let's Greenland, separate thing, but also under Denmark. Okay, also, there's the uh, the, the Oland Islands. They're like a, uh, by the way, look at their lovely Nordic flag. They're like a Swedish speaking part of the, of Finland. Again, they're monolingually Swedish, which adds some real complexities to how uh, Finland works. Also, um, you know, again, like, uh, they're one of the first international mandates from the League of Nations when that was a thing, and uh, as a result, there's still a tiny bit of bitterness in how things go down over there. But then also, if we look at, like, the Faroe Islands, um, because, you know what, okay, Greenland, sure, I understand that. The Oland Islands, they're weird, but I, I guess I understand that. But then if we talk about uh, the fact that the Faroe Islands are right over here, um, <laughs> <laughs> Every time I click the map, it just it's like, no, you will not see the map. So the Faroe Islands are over here, and they also have, guess what, their own flag and their own, uh, you know, like a little coat of arms, and they're part of Denmark, but also kind of not. And, you know, again, when you look at their location in the middle of the ocean, you can kind of see how it's weird that they belong to Denmark. Like, the story as to why is they used to be Norwegian, and then Denmark and Norway merged, and Norway got... <laughs> and uh, although uh, Norway probably should have kept the kids, Denmark got to keep the kids, and the kids included Greenland and uh, the Faroe Islands. Also included Iceland, but whole other story. And uh, so the Faroe Islands are a part of Denmark, despite being closer to Scotland and... Uh, rather the United Kingdom, closer to Ireland, closer to Norway, closer to Sweden, closer to Iceland, but sure. So Faroe Islands, part of Denmark, but also kind of distinct. So they're also a part of the Nordic system. And you know why? Because they've got this sweet, sweet flag. I mean, look at that flag, look at this flag, Nordic cross, that means they're part of the club, right? I mean, it's this is the key thing that defines them. Really, the reason to be happy is when you look at their flags, it's like, oh, look at that Nordic cross. It's like a cross 
but it's sideways. It's uh, slightly, it's not like, it's not like a, a, a cross going through the center. Wow, UK, 15th happiest country. I can tell they centered their cross. No, flat cross going slightly to the left. That's how all these countries are so successful. And allow me to prove that even more because you're not Faroe Islands. You might not have never heard of them, but boy, is it beautiful. It's one of those places I was gonna go in summer if, uh, <laughs> actually I was gonna book in summer of 2020, so I guess I'm glad I didn't book, but uh, it's one of those places I've wanted to go forever. I One of the few reasons I think I need to learn to drive is for this place, they don't have a large population, getting around is gonna be impossible without driving, but getting to places like this, like walking is genuinely dangerous, and it's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm do this, it's gonna be great. But also, fun fact, they're not just one of the prettiest nations, they're also the most successful in terms of Nobel laureates per capita. So, admittedly, they only had one. This is more teaching you about how statistics are skewed by small entities, but if you go by Nobel Prize laureates per 10 million people, you can see how the Faroe Islands are actually the most successful by a lot. If we take out St. Lucia, they're more than six times as successful as Luxembourg, the next major country. And wow, uh, you can see how just because, uh, you know, Austria has 22 or the UK has 133 uh, or the US has 383, no, they don't count because low per capita. Faroe Islands, most successful country. The reason this is skewing statistics, by the way, you might say, no, they're just a really smart country. Of 50,000 people, one was a Nobel laureate. Well, think about Greenland, a similar population, zero Nobel laureates. Are they the dumbest, the least smart? It's like, no, they just haven't. It's, it's a very low chance of going between zero and one because statistics can only go to the nearest round number. Well, we can talk about statistics and how they're skewed by small countries sometimes, but instead, let's talk about the fact that like, okay, so if it's the Nordic cross that brings all these great countries together, then, and also we can include countries that are parts of other countries because we include Faroe Islands, and then as a result, we include the Oland Islands. And it's like, so then shouldn't we really start to include like Orkney? Look at their flag. Tell me that's not a Nordic cross and I'll tell you you're wrong. Fun fact, by the way, Orkney is a part of Scotland. You, you probably heard something about it. They're right over here. Can we just click on Orkney? No, we're gonna have to type it in like a, uh, like a peasant. Uh, anyway, so this is Orkney, and as you can see, um, they're the closest islands to Scotland. They're over here, but they used to belong to Norway for a really long time. And you might be thinking, like, yeah, for like you know, like the 500s or something, back before Europe was really Europe. But um, no, 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 S semi recently. In fact, <laughs> if you look into why they stopped being a part of um, Norway, it's actually pretty funny. If we uh, just click down here, you can see how in 1468 the territory was a part of uh, Norway, but Christian the one. Uh, pledged the islands to Scotland as the payment of the dowry to his uh, as security against payment of the dowry to his daughter Margaret. That's right. The the islands were used as collateral on a loan, and I guess he just didn't pay the money. So. <laughs> Can you imagine just having lich like look? It's quite a lot of islands too. Like this is a huge amount of territory relative to the UK. It's like oh yeah, I own these islands. Don't worry. I'm gonna. You can trust I'm gonna pay. You can you can take the islands if not. And you're like, well, this is a solid way for me to ensure I'll collect my money. And then the the guy's just like, ha, your islands now. <laughs> I know I find that hilarious, but maybe maybe that's just me. And uh, yeah, so it's a, a basically the the islands are fairly small in terms of population. As you can see, their population is still lower than in the year 1800, which is kind of rare in any major developed country. But if we're including Auckland, because they do have this absolutely lovely uh, flag right here, which is from the Pictish tribal name, meaning young pig, the young pig islands. Then also, you know what, you can see on a map right here, if we're including these islands, then it makes sense that we also have to include these islands because this is Shetland. And you know what, if these are Norwegian, you can imagine that these islands are pretty Norwegian too. So what's the scoop with them, Toy Cat? Well, if you look at Shetland, shown, uh, usually they have to put it in a box, but there's a whole fun fact about Scotland not allowing them to be put in a box. It's 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 fun fun little side note that we'll go for <laughs> into another day. But um, as you can see, Shetland also has a little Nordic flag. Probably the most boring of the Nordic flags. It seems like just reversed Finland, but like you know, um, let's not criticize the flag too much. It is in fact a Nordic flag, and uh, yeah, it's got the same <laughs> kind of story of like, oh yeah, did you know? that uh, they, they, they they went from Norway to, to Scotland in kind of dumb ways, and then Scotland became a part of the UK, and so Shetland is a part of the UK. And uh, as, a, as a result, they were used as part of the moving people around between new... There's, there's a lot of really fun, like, history to these islands, even though they're relatively not populated. They had a huge oil boom uh, because the North Sea oil. Interesting enough, like, give, Norway sell it, selling these islands, giving them away, um, that was one of the worst decisions they ever made because the North Sea oil, this is the North Sea, 
all of the oil that was there would have been Norway's, but instead it was basically 50-50 to Norway, the UK. And uh, although the Shetland Islands benefited a lot, uh, and therefore the UK benefited some amount, you know what, Norway benefited so much more. I always like to bring this fact up, like, you know, you, you know how your country, you're, every time you pay tax, like five, five to 10% of that tax is just paying off money that like your government has spent a long time ago. Norway has uh, like a, over a trillion dollars lying around in just securities and bonds like, oh yeah, we invested so that we actually don't need to deal with that whole thing. It's like, I wish my government cared about me as much as Norway's government cares about them. I want some oil, damn it, it's good for you. Um, but also what's good for you is not going off topic and instead going, wow, Shetland, it's an interesting island, isn't it? Look how pretty it is. Okay, let's be honest, the real reason you hear about Shetland is because if we go all the way down to the bottom, you can see that they have Shetland ponies. They are in fact from Shetland. They're adorable. Look at these things. You might think these horses are fake because they show up in like movies every now and then, like animated stuff. You're like, oh, those those are cute little idea like No, they're real. I've pet a Shetland pony. It's adorable. And do you wanna do you wanna pet some Shetland ponies? Do you know where you have to go? You have to go to Shetland. And uh, yeah, anyway, so with that said, <laughs> they are a Nordic country too, because Iceland has has ponies, so does Shetland. The Iceland has a Nordic cross flag, so does Shetland, and we're good to go. So, interestingly enough, I was trying to find because like, okay, we've gone over all the Nordic flags now, but we actually haven't. Interestingly enough, uh, you can find there are a lot of countries that have Nordic crosses, or a lot of sub-regions that do it, but like, you, you're kind of stretching when you're like, oh yeah, what about this part of Russia? What about this part of Estonia? What about this part of Northern England? You know, you get, you, you start to stretch real fast about what's in Nordic uh, countries and what's not. And so I was looking for like this Nordic Games as like the official definition. What I found instead though was this. It is the NatWest Island Games. Um, so all of the islands around Europe, uh, all of, or like not all of them, but like all of the ones that want to join, uh, get together and play games. So obviously the, this is tiny islands, like Great Britain doesn't get involved, but all the tiny islands gets involved. And uh, as you can see, they play, they play some games. It's moved from Isle of Man to Guernsey to, it's a very confusing thing that like thousands of athletes get involved in apparently. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as a result, you can see how the most successful of these countries, fun fact, is actually Jersey because of their high population. And the least successful country is, wait, uh, Oldenay, which has just a population of 19. And if we go by total medals actually, you can see how Freya from Norwegian, Norway has just a single gold medal you suck, Freya. In fact, what is Freya? See, they don't have a Nordic cross. Not involved in it. it. Can you call this an island? You know, I'm I'm really starting to doubt whether this is valid. Also, oh wait, there we go. That's that's Trondelag. My bad. This this is in fact an island. Wow, they have a. They look pretty. Do you want to go on a little side tangent and go look at Freya? Should we do it? Let's let's do it. Let's let's go look at Freya. Uh, is this is this Freya? Are you Freya? I'm, I'm just gonna have to copy paste it, aren't I? I was gonna be, I was gonna type it myself. But I think we're going to run into some serious issues of my ability to do that. So, Freya. Freya? Freya. There we go. You add a little sound and then you sound like you're speaking real European. So, this is Freya. It is actually connected by bridges to this island, which is connected by bridges to this island. Man, Norwegian infrastructure for like this many islands when they've got 5,000 people. Wow, it's pretty good. It's almost like Norway has a lot of money because they cared about future generations. Beyond just that, wow, it's it's almost like that's a smart thing to do. Wow, look how pretty Freya is. You wanna come here? You wanna live in this little wooden house? Wouldn't that be a dream? It would, man, I, this is, this is so pretty, right? The fact that, it's interesting, like either this is objectively pretty, which I think is unlikely, or Google Maps is broken. Anyway, so either this is objectively pretty, which I don't think is the most likely um, way we can assume this happens, or what I think is way more likely is that like we have less, like, when you see Norwegian and Scandinavian stuff, there's just like a certain happiness that comes from it. I'm looking at a graveyard right now. Look how cute the graveyard is. It's like, oh, it's got a little, it's got a little Norwegian barn in the background. Oh, look how, look how adorable all of this stuff is. You know, there's something about Scandinavia that is romanticized culturally, or maybe there's something about romanticism that is Scandinavialized culturally. I don't know for sure. They've got a bus going through here. Like, how is there a bus in a car? Wow, almost like there's pretty good local services because the government was financially responsible with their money and you're not paying down the debts of people who bought things 
Oh, except they didn't buy things years ago. They used it to fund very temporary programs to buy votes years ago. And now you're paying for the for the votes of politicians who have long not only lost office, but in most cases died. Wow, that's a good thing that I'm happy for you. Anyway, so that said, uh, let's move on from Toy Cat's fiscal responsibility rant to how we should talk about, wow, here are the flags of all those countries, but in the style of the Swiss flag. Don't they look cute? That was a good segue, right? That was a that was smooth, seamless. So if we talk, um, we talk a little bit here about the Nordic countries. An interesting fact about them, which I always like to bring up, is that they're so, you know, if we combine them all together, you get a pretty small country by uh, population. You get a huge country by area, the seventh largest in the world. You get a really nice country by HDI, and uh, not so large by military, but like surprisingly uh, well off. But you look, you get a GDP per capita of 1.7 trillion dollars. This, uh, the, you know, like 26 million people living in pretty, hard to work through areas. You know, this isn't the ideal territory you would take. Has a GDP um, per capita of $65,000, which would make them fifth in the world, as well as the 12th largest normally. That's insane. 26 million people is smaller than the population of, of actually, a lot of places actually, but you know, <laughs> it's smaller than the population of Egypt. It's smaller than the population of India by literally a billion and a lot. And so here is a fun graph of all the countries that have a lower, not GDP per capita, lower GDP total. The net value of all services and goods produced in that country is less than the Nordic countries combined. And you know what? Is it a shocker that Ireland is less? No. Is it a shocker that Spain is less? Actually, actually yes. <laughs> is it a shocker that all of Africa is less? I mean, again, offensive stereotypes. I mean, even the really successful bits of Africa, kind of interesting. Then all of Southeast Asia, really interesting. Australia? Russia? <laughs> what? Mexico? Do you know how many Mexicans there are? Uh, lots. Several. M several several more than in the Nordic countries. Um, in fact, it's only the world's largest, again, like the Brazils, the, the, the UA United States, Japans of the world that can hold a candle to the Nordic countries. And uh, yeah, uh, what is it that does it? We can we can debate and go over all day, but this video isn't here to to make those big debates. It's not here to say, hey, the Scandinavian countries are the best, because honestly, you can prove pretty much any point you want by saying, hey, the Norwegian, uh, the the the, <laughs> the Nordic countries do it. You see, the Norway Nordic is a really easy uh, linguistic mistake to make, huh? But um, but the, yeah, interesting enough, if you look at pretty much anywhere um in 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 these countries, that uh, and, and if you look at pretty much any fact of these countries, it's easy to be like, yeah. That is the good. That is the what we want in the world. Look how look how pretty Bodo Norway is. Um, <laughs> don't you want to be like Bodo Norway? Of course I do. I want to go to the co-op pricks. You know, that's that's where I want to be. I want to go to the Smoke King electronic cigarettes. <laughs> that's fun. Uh, but yeah, like um, you know, it's it's so easy to prove whatever point you want to make via something uh, comparison here. The easiest way I can say though is that they generally do a good job at all the things. They don't focus their country in one aspect. They, you know, they can have a strong social safety net alongside a strong social safety net, i.e. like people actually looking after each other rather than assuming the government will do so. Um, alongside having easy doing business, alongside having <laughs> high taxes, despite the fact, you know, like, uh, but lev levying them on individuals rather than uh, yeah, and like uh, you know, giving people value in exchange for that. Uh, there's there's so many different things that they do that seem like they come into conflict with each other. Like again, the how do you have high high spending without having to have high borrowing, which leads to lower spending in the long run or higher. And it's like oh yeah, the, ignoring that Norway just goes for oil. You know, of course, Norway would example. Ignoring that Norway has the oil and that maybe Iceland has fish because you know we all, we all need fish so bad and that makes a lot of money. Um, if we ignore these two countries' examples, we go to like Sweden, which is the largest of all of them. Doesn't have large oil reserves. Uh, I think it's a net importer of oil, or it's very close. Um, but it's like, oh yes, yeah, Stockholm, Sweden. I, I, I spent a week living here uh, in like 2016. It's like also a very successful, great city. They, the pretty much anything you can think of is done well here. And what's, and then the answer is like, so how do we do that? How do we be competent, good countries? And the answer is really hard to say is, is is there a, is there a solution? Is there a cure? Is it pure chance? I mean, someone had to be the most successful country. Um, or my theory, if you look at a, pretty much any country uh, that is like again, contra you would assume counterintuitively. We would we, we would intuitively I, I mean assume 
the colder countries are worse because for half of the year, they're like in sight. They can't plant crops. Their agricultural community is going to suffer as a result. But maybe because they have to move past the agriculture. Maybe because being cold brings people together in a way that they want to be rather than they feel they have to be. Um, or like they feel like they want even though they have to. Maybe that's what does it. It's You can list a hundred theories and at the end of this video, I'm not going to give you any... I'm not going to claim that I know the answer because anyone who claims to know the answer is advancing their agenda. If you think that it's a... I, I think the only thing you can take is that they're very competent countries. But the thing about why and how can we learn from that, that's something everyone gets to learn from their own. Let's go to Alta, Norway, shall we? Let's see what's going on over here. Ooh, Dune Verd Matabar. Let's, let's go check it out. I'm excited. Ooh, look. See, we're this far north, and it still just looks like a normal place. Isn't that crazy? There's an, there's an amphi and a, a grand bunpris. I'm assuming that means price. What does bun mean? Oh, gourmet bunpris. So there's a tasty supermarket? No, that can't be true. I guess it's like a shipping. I want to know what a gourmet bunpris is. Also, a kiwi mini pris. So that it's got to be a supermarket, right? Huh, I wonder. Anyway, what I also wonder is why you're still watching this video. Get out of here. Oh, okay, I love you, really. Have a, have a nice day. Goodbye.